talking about lights out testing for lights out business. So this is a very important topic for us here, basically. We, got, we talk about it all the time. And as we do, every time we continue to update what we say about the important elements that make up this topic. So lights out testing is a general reference to scheduled and triggered testing supporting any development methodology and testing for enterprise applications as well. And notice it doesn't say for lights on application, but rather for lights on business. That is making sure our whole business continues to work properly in the face of tactical change and enhancement. In a nutshell, it represents an insurance policy to avoid outages, and we'll break it down today in reference to the fact that we are faced now with continuous change, creating on-demand automation to enable lights out testing, and using the right tool for the job. So I'm sure most of you have heard the term continuous testing or continuous quality. It is basically the extreme of what we refer to as lights out testing, wherein we have the automation do all of our testing for us independently, often overnight. This now can be triggered for on-demand testing needs. I'm not going to take us too far into the weeds today, but I do want to break, that, break down in terms of what you may be hearing and um, what you are or will be facing in your application landscape. Whether you're working with enterprise applications or homegrown application development or both, continuous is rapidly, if not already, becoming a part of your world. So what we're looking at here is a snapshot of part of a typical enterprise IT application landscape. Over time, it became popular and often financially efficient to integrate best of breed point solutions to gain competitive advantage. The result is somewhat of a spaghetti mix of applications and technology providing the means for our business. And of course, every element of our landscape is changed or enhanced on varying intervals, overall representing a continuous change for our cross-application business processes. So how on earth do we continue to apply change without allowing problems to be introduced into our environment? Well, obviously some companies don't always succeed. For example, there's a recent report from the FCC reporting on an audit about a failure level three that actually occurred back in 2016. We have a blog about this on our website, but the bottom line is that a field left blank in the UI by a user in the fraud department was interpreted as a wildcard and caused a major problem. This user would enter numbers suspected of malicious activity to block them, and when a particular entry field was left blank, it was interpreted as a wildcard and blocked 111 million calls, including 15 emergency 911 calls. So in the complexity of our landscapes, it's almost not surprising that these things are going to happen, but effective testing could have caught this. In fact, this was also a packaged application that was in play. So in case, in this case, functional may not have presented, prevented this disaster. The function involved was designed to leverage blank fields as wildcards and therefore was working properly. So for example, API testing of that function would have passed successfully. In the context, however, of the user interface working with the function, this was not the intention. Therefore, proper UI testing would have been the comprehensive approach to avoiding the dilemma. Much of the problem is that even today, many companies still rely heavily on manual testing. It sounds like uh, less than 30% of the audience application landscapes are automated for that fact. But in today's spaghetti mix of application landscape, multiplied by the variations of data driving our processes, linear scalable manual testing simply cannot keep up or requires armies of testers, which is really just not reasonable. Yet automation can provide this effort quite efficiently, especially when the changes to our environment are happening continuously. Let's start with more of a DevOps analysis of this continuous concept, but then we'll quickly hit enterprise or packaged applications as well. I wanna to help to somewhat define the terminology that you've most likely been hearing about if you're not already aware. Since the Agile Manifesto back in like 2001, breaking large waterfall projects into smaller deliverables has provided a much greater ability for projects to be responsive to change and adaptation during development ultimately delivering a better solution in the end. These smaller sprints have further evolved into methodologies providing developers the ability to make changes and enhancements rapidly and inject them into the solution as soon as they are ready, often daily. 
The injection of change is then the trigger for the needed testing. But to truly ensure that the changes will not introduce problems overall, performance, regression, true UI-based business process end-to-end -end testing also needs to be performed along with the traditional functional testing of the change itself. This is not exactly common, but quite important. We've noted the end-to-end -end testing above with an alternative icon to represent that it provides the full insurance that the rest of the business around my changes will still continue to work properly, properly with my changes. Like the FCC example we discussed, only this comprehensive approach would have prevented the problem. In these methodologies like CICD or continuous integration slash continuous deployment, uh, deployment of the change or enhancement can even be set up to automatically deploy if the automated testing has succeeded. Now that's automation put to great use to facilitate our ability to deliver change with our complex landscapes. Continuous delivery is the overarching concept that software is always in a deployable state throughout the life cycle. Continuous improvement is then an ongoing effort to improve the product through these incremental changes or enhancements. And finally, continuous quality is a process that ensures quality is ingrained across the entire software development life cycle. Continuous everything pretty much sums it up. But in summary, for DevOps, you can see that testing has become a natural and integral part of the methodology triggered by the applied changes themselves. And when applicable and comprehensive testing is involved, we can deploy change continuously with a high confidence of not introducing problems or worst case, causing outages. That is the insurance that we need. Let's not forget about our enterprise applications. In this slide, we have a side-by-side -side representation of the software development or delivery life, life cycle for a homegrown application on the top and a package or enterprise delivery on the bottom. The clear difference is that for packaged applications, the vendor is doing the development and delivering that application. Even so, the configuration of the application for your company or the customizations that you may apply, all coupled with the updates from the vendor will often represent frequent change. So you may not think of your enterprise application as being a participant in continuous anything, but consider packages like SAP, where transports or updates are applied in typical environments on a daily basis or every other day. This is clearly quite frequent. And these are changes that should be triggering the needed lights out or on-demand automated testing. Not to mention that most vendors providing our applications are themselves going agile or continuous and futuristically will be providing changes and enhancements on an increasing frequency. We need to be prepared for continuous testing. And automation for testing is in no way mandating how we do what we do. It simply participates in what we do and can make that effort easier and faster. It eliminates what was formerly a tedious and time-consuming manual exercise, one that isn't truly scalable enough for the testing needs and frequency of our complex landscapes. The only way to really keep up with continuous testing is by using the right automation solution and enable enabling lights out and triggered on-demand testing. WorkSoft provides a solution where automation is in every stage of the project's lifecycle. Automated testing is at the center of this, and this is what everybody thinks about first. But let's take a look, for example, at automated discovery in the planning and exploration initial stage. This is how we can rapidly create the automation foundation to support our continuous needs. Shown here at the top left in reference to transferable automation, the WorkSoft solution can automatically capture or record, you may think of it as a recording, a user's use of their application and immediately provide process visualization, step-by-step -step documentation, and step-by-step -step automation. The automation then becomes an asset to use for testing for every little change or enhancement that is introduced. Let's take a look at an example of this capability. To do that today, I'm going to bounce over to a live environment. And the bottom line, as mentioned, is that automation can be extremely valuable, but historically it's been difficult to
to create. You know, historically, it would require that the end user that knows the process write a dissertation about what is needed and hand that off to a programmer to develop the automation. And then, if in fact it wasn't right, and it often wasn't down to a very granular level, they needed to collaborate and talk about that that programming that is providing the automation to make sure it was doing the right thing. And it was a very uh, tedious and often very difficult process to accomplish. So Worksoft has applied automation to all of this. And what I'd like to demonstrate for you today is that that foundation, even certify users that have been using us for a while may or may not be familiar with capture and or the automated discovery. So I think it's important for us to demonstrate that um, to lay this foundation. The expectation is that we can capture end user activity to quickly turn that into automation for continuous needs. So what I'd like to do, I've done this many times, and I don't think uh, in a webinar I've used Salesforce. So that's what we'll use for today. And, and I'm simply going to begin capture, which is you can see sitting in my tray intentionally out of the way of, of me as a user so that I can do my work. And then I'm gonna proceed to log in and perform the activity of creating an opportunity in Salesforce. Along the way, as I interact with the application, you'll see that capture down below continues to stay out of my way, but is letting me know that it's still there and it's collecting my activity. And in the end, we will see that it's collecting all of the assets that we referred to, not only the process visual, but the documentation and the step-by-step -step automation. So what I'm doing here is navigating like the end user into creating a new opportunity. And I won't belabor this too much because this is the boring part of just being the user. But it's important for us to be able to see this then for what the Worksoft solution will create. I'm going to create the opportunity by just sticking primarily to the required fields involved. And then we'll save that. And add some product before we're done. So circle back here using our standard price book, using drop downs, using tables, using check boxes, using whatever elements that the user would naturally use as a part of their normal work. The Worksoft solution in the background is collecting all of this activity into readable automation. And that's what we're going to take a look at here in just a second. So I've added some product. I'm pretty much done with my opportunity. And I'm going to end the capture. And since this is the first time I've done this today, I'm entering my credentials. I also have a few additional prompts because I'm a member of several of our client spaces. But the end result is that when the user ends the capture, they should in receive a message back from our solution that we have successfully captured that activity. Now the user can start and stop capture around additional activity proceeding throughout their day. In fact, many times production users are asked to start and stop capture around normal production activity so that we can then leverage that for an automation purpose. And in that sense, we're not even going out of our way to create automation. But let's go take a look at what we've created. To do that, I'm gonna sign in to our solution. And without saying too much, this really isn't training, I'm going to navigate into where I can see my own captures. Basically, all of the user captures come into this space and we can easily filter to look at what we want to at any point. But in this case, I'm focusing on my own. And here is my Salesforce capture. You can see that it's broken out functionally, providing a business process visual of exactly what I have provided in functional form. I also have from this the ability to generate documentation. So I'll bring up a PDF. We do this typically in PDF or Word. And I'm gonna bring up a PDF version of the steps that are created. Full screen captures when we see that change. Tactical object captures along with the narrative explaining every step that I perform throughout the, this process. So this is the type of step-by-step -step documentation that we're referring to that comes as a natural output from the capture activity. So gone are the days of writing that dissertation to hand off to a programmer. Basically, not only have we documented, provided a business process visual, but we also have this in step-by-step -step automated form, which I'll switch to in just one moment. Before I do, I just wanna show you one additional thing here. And that is to switch to another set of filters whereby 
I'm showing now activity around my order to cache space in one of my applications. It's important to note that not only are we collecting the captures for the purpose of automation, but in doing so, we naturally consolidate down those visuals to the unique paths that the users have functionally taken through our system. That helps us very quickly to identify overlap or reuse of functionality. And that truly then applies to the automation capabilities as well, because that's less automation that we have to capture or create when we can reuse those functions within our automation for various end-to-end -end scenarios. And really probably the, the more important thing to say here is that with respect to that insurance policy that we're referring to, to truly have that insurance, we need to be testing our systems the exact same way our users are using them. And what you've just witnessed is the ability to capture that exact activity that our users are performing. So regardless, of what they would have put in that dissertation earlier, we now have exactly what they would be doing in our systems and we have the opportunity to then leverage this for the purpose of automated testing. So let's switch over to that portion of our solution where I have access to my captured activity as well. And that is this Salesforce opportunity. Notice the functions that were broken out in that business process view are also represented here within the automation on the left in this tree view, basically representing the steps, and I'll click on the steps tab on the right, that were performed for creating that new opportunity. And what our solution does, it sounds like most of you are familiar with us, but um, we produce a narrative that's readable to explain exactly what every step is doing. So if I click run, it's going to run back through that Salesforce example. But based on the amount of time we have today, I am going to do that, but in larger form. What we're going to do typically is take these captures and construct our cross-platform end-to-end examples to represent what might even be a multiplayer cross-platform business process. So here's one that does that exact same Salesforce functionality around creating an opportunity, but it's got a few extra pieces. Basically, we start with generating a fake person to create our opportunity for, and that's a little bit later part of our conversation for today that I'll hit on shortly, but we're gonna see that. In this random data generator, we're gonna generate a fake person and then carry that individual into Salesforce for creating the opportunity. We also are then going to use Salesforce to create the opportunity, go from order to invoice within our ERP system, and also do the fulfillment in an older, green screen application. So cross-platform activity, all easily dragged together to represent um, what could have been multiple users in the past, and then available on demand for any continuous testing needs that we have. So in this case, you can see our, our fake individual, uh, Lauren Jose, has been entered. Uh, similarly to what I captured a moment ago, we are, or we are walking through the creation of the opportunity adding product to that opportunity. And when it's done, in this case, we choose to close Salesforce. We'll see that in a moment and launch our ERP system. I'll, I'll wait and let it catch up basically, which is a good point. Our, our automation is gonna run as fast as your application will respond because we've already got the steps prescript, um, prescriptively put together. We're simply now following them, and as soon as that application will respond, like in this case, my SAP system is quite responsive, we go very rapidly through the steps for order, outbound delivery, and invoicing within this system. Here's a case where we're trying to do the outbound delivery, and we tried to do it too quickly. The order was still background processing, so there's a natural mechanism where we can see that, make the decision, okay, let's wait a few seconds and try again. Automation can be intelligent. I wasn't gonna to go too far into the weeds, but that's an important mention uh, for this foundation of automation. Here's the green screen. If you blink, you miss it. Very quickly, we do the fulfillment and then back to ERP for the screen capture of the document flow. Everything is now complete. So I didn't say it before and I should have. I had let go of the mouse to let the automation do its job. And now I'm going to take control of that mouse again. But basically the bottom line, you can see the, the very granular set of results was returned right back to the screen. Since I ran this one interactively, it knew that I was sitting here and it brought the results to me and has navigated directly to the first of any failures because that's what we're interested in. All of these green check marks means that many parts of this end-to-end -end scenario worked properly, but 
there was in fact a failure and that's what it's bringing to my attention. We wanted to verify on this particular step that the processing status is equal to correct. Not only is it not equal to correct, we also took a screen capture of that. The mouse is acting up and I wanna scroll down to show you that we've collected that information. So performing the job of the normal users, but in automated form very rapidly, not to mention this could be triggered to run at any time or scheduled for the middle of the night to do this testing based on my testing need. So we've laid the foundation with capture and readable automation. Let's get back to our presentation to take our topic a little bit further. And to recap, very quickly, because this is a very important part, as a result of that capture, WorkSoft Solution rethinks automation even within the first stage. With one simple capture, a user just doing their normal job creates the visualization of the process, supporting documentation and test automation, and this is that foundation providing our con continuous testing needs. So today, the first topic was dealing with the realization that we need to be prepared for continuous testing for our DevOps and enterprise package applications to enable our automation to be able to provide what we need on any frequency we need to make sure it is on-demand automation. This simply means that I need to be able to trigger my automated business process to run when I have introduced change, and it needs to be self-sufficient and repeatable with respect to the data that's needed for testing. So despite the fact that it was easy to capture the business process from the user, that doesn't mean that I can turn around and set, up, set that up to run whenever needed. To get there, I want to ask you a question. When you sit down to do manual testing today, what's the first thing you do? That's metaphorical since you really can't respond at the moment. Here's what I mostly experience in working with our clients. I say, hey, can we run through your business process so that we can capture it? And they say, hang on for a second, I need to gather the data that we can use. I need to look that up or I need to generate some data that allows me to do that. You may be more prepared, but in many cases, when I'm working with clients, that's what typically happens, and understandably so. Our processes need data to run, and we don't run the same data every time we run. In most cases, we cannot use that same data. What I wanted to come across with in this next topic is the fact that we can use automation not only to save you the effort of doing manual testing, but additionally to save the effort of doing manual test data gathering. In doing so, what we're truly creating then are scenarios that are self-sufficient and repeatable, basically available on demand for whenever we need to use them. Let's take a look at this example. In terms of test data concepts, it's much deeper than where I'm gonna to go today. But at a minimum, most companies will take production data and move it into pre-production environments for testing purposes on some, some semi-regular basis. That is represented on this slide on the left side, and it's an effective way to seed those environments so that we can do effective testing. On the right side, we're showing a simple order process that we want to automate, a simple process that needs good test data to be able to run. Now, if I begin to schedule that process and run, it may run great for a while, but eventually it blows up, not because my application is broken, but because the material that I'm ordering is out of inventory. No problem, I then go back into my automation and easily capture the steps to increase the inventory. In fact, making this very crystal clear, I don't have to recapture everything, I just capture the net new steps that are needed and I easily drag them into this process to leverage in this way. By doing this now, I've created a much more repeatable scenario that I can run ongoing because my material will always have inventory added for me to then consume from an ordering perspective. So that's great until this process that I run in QA ultimately gets pointed at dev because I need to do some lower level testing. And it blows up right away because that material doesn't even exist in dev. So let's enhance the automation one more time. Let's add the steps to find or generate materials in the environment that I'm running in much like we generated the fake person a moment ago in that end-to-end -end scenario. We can set up the automation easily, the same steps the user would do, like running a material report, and if I find the right materials under the right categories, we latch onto them and use them, or if I don't, we may have to go over to MM01 and create some materials. 
in that environment for our testing needs. This can all be done with automation and it can be done as part of an end-to-end -end business process in a nice, neat package. In fact, we may even do some cleanup on the end to make sure the whole thing is more repeatable. So automating the find or generate for data needs in each of our processes can significantly reduce the frequency for which you need to transfer data to refresh or, or, pre, or repopulate your uh, pre-production environments. But more importantly, it represents on-demand automation processes that you can run on any frequency without having to manually provide the data. This is the type of automation needed for our continuous needs. So with that, we've met the first two bullets of our presentation. To summarize very quickly, we're crystal clear that if we don't need continu continuous testing now, it is inevitable. And to enable this, we need to create on-demand automation so that we can run it whenever needed. But what else may be needed? Why can't we just hook up our on-demand automation for our continuous needs at this point? Well, the fact is we're almost there. If anyone has tried automation, you're probably familiar with some of the challenges from this slide. First and foremost, we're talking about testing just like a user, which by definition means there are going to be hundreds, if not thousands of tests that we have to manage across multiple applications as we've seen. The tests must be often scheduled in sequence with complex dependencies. It's difficult to manage distributed and diverse automated testing resources, all of these users that come together to represent true business processes are working on different machines, sometimes in different geographical locations. So central monitoring can be a challenge. We need the ability to just say, go run my thousand tests and let me know when they're done. Without the right solution, that's extremely difficult to manage. The testing time, especially in global situations, is often strictly limited or closely scrutinized. In fact, in my former life, we had a two hour testing window for a global e-commerce site that we always had to fit within. So you want to be able to minimize that downtime so that we can maximize our value yet still accomplish all of our testing needs. Here's an attempt to somewhat categorize the automation execution, automation and execution challenges. Automation acting like a user needs access. Those users that are doing testing have to be able to log in and you need to be able to do that with automation, often on a remote machine, and not only that, but keep it awake for the life of the testing that's happening, and even shut it down cleanly for the repetitive needs uh, for that resource. From an orchestration perspective, you have to be able to orchestrate that workflow. We talked a little bit about multiplayer business processes, and that orchestration can often have some requirements of its own that have to participate in the overall scheduling activity. And with respect to scale, especially in a global perspective, we need to often get everything done, like I mentioned, in a two hour window. Not only that, but when I say everything, the scale of everything can be industrial scale. We can have many, many tests that need to happen very quickly within these windows. The WorkSoft solution is predicated on solving these challenges. Taking distributed execution as an example, we have an execution manager that uses agents that can be distributed very easily to physical or virtual workstations. This includes the ability to work with an RDP server, for example, and even have it log in or create a session for doing testing, then shut that down when in fact the testing is done. The execution manager is also a fully fledged scheduler designed to serve lights out testing using load balancing and definable dependencies, these represent intelligence that you can build into the schedule as needed. One example might be, I want to run my smoke testing, and if that succeeds, then I would like to proceed to run my very granular full-on regression testing. On the right-hand side of the slide, we're showing how we provide interoperability with all of the Agile and DevOps tools. In our execution manager, we've got a RESTful API layer that not only allows it to be that very powerful scheduler that I was referring to, but also allows it to be triggered on demand from the outside world, from these tools that we know and love. Sounds like Jenkins was the most popular in the poll from uh, earlier. 
This is how a continuous integration process would be able to automatically trigger automated testing. In this particular slide, you can see we're representing a remote test lab that might consist of virtual machines. You could have an on-premise lab of physical machines or a virtual set of resources representing both and doing very complex scheduling, intelligent scheduling as needed, as well as driving this from our DevOps solutions. I'd like to give you a glimpse of this and what I'm referring to. So I'm going to bounce back over to my demo environment and bring up the WorkSoft Execution Manager, as well as integrate it or show the integration with Jenkins. So I'm using the same environment as before. Let's launch the Execution Manager that I'm referring to. And let me introduce you first to some of the foundational pieces that make up the overall solution. Once again, this is not exactly training, so I'm going to skip around a little bit and just show you a few things, but it's based on what we were referring to as the resources that provide the ability for us to do the testing and to distribute that testing to even geographical locations as needed. These resources are agent-based, so directly from this browser interface, centrally manageable for um, the execution manager, we can download that agent to any physical or virtual machine. As mentioned, we can support RDP servers and control, for example, creating sessions. This uh, particular Chicago resource that I have is an RDP session that allows me to specify how many sessions I'm willing for this to be able to create for the purpose of testing. These resources then are driven by requests. And it sounds like, once again, many of you are familiar with Certify. The Request has the ability to run processes, and a process would be, for anybody that's not familiar, like the end-to-end -end Salesforce process that I ran earlier. So if I bring up just an example request for, uh, for this demonstration, I'll bring this up in the editor, we can see that there's the ability to enter some high-level categorical information, including who needs to be notified. This can be any number of emails or groups as needed to make people aware of the activity at any given time. Then the schedule itself can be very granular. We can get that down to kicking things off minute by minute if that is in fact what your schedule calls for. The processes is where I was headed. And like the Salesforce example, um, which is actually the second one in this list, a request represents a collection of processes. And in providing that collection, we can determine the sequence, if needed, that those would execute in. You can see in this case, I've got them set up as any order, which allows the load balancing to kick in and really just grab anything and run it on any available resource. We can specify conditions. I only want to run one of these if the other one succeeds or fails. We can see the status very clearly, and we can also control as we drill in um, other things at a fairly granular level. For example, which resource, if I want to specify, should this be able to run on? Or what group of resources should this be able to run on? What level of logging do I want to collect along the way? And what timeout policy am I willing for this to um, use for conditions where my environment might be a little volatile and things may come and go as needed? Basically, all of the capabilities that are needed to intelligently control the schedules that we need to provide this more so for our waterfall or scheduled projects. Then the execution manager itself has a RESTful API layer that's not exactly visible here, whereby external applications, DevOps tools, for example, can easily reach out and request execution. Let's demonstrate what I'm referring to here. I'm going to minimize the execution manager for just a moment and bring up a demonstration Jenkins environment that I've got set up here for this purpose. So in here, we've got several projects that are linked into then running the appropriate automation anytime we build or rebuild those projects. So I'm gonna pick one here that uses the same process that we ran a moment ago. And that's so that we can see it on the screen when we run. So in this case, I've got my project within Jenkins. You can see my history of builds here before, and there was a problem, and that's because the automation that we run that 
in this case, as you witnessed, has a failure in it. And that's, that's actually by design for demonstration purposes. But when I build this project, above and beyond just the normal build activities, which we're seeing kicking in, it will also reach out to the execution manager through the, that RESTful API layer that we were referring to. So if I go over here to the resources tab, it's gonna take it a second, I think, to get through the build. But then now we can see, because my Chicago resource was available, it is invoking, logging in, starting the execution manager agent on WorkSoft 1 of that particular RDB server. And then down below, you can see that there's a screen not intended for real-time monitoring of that process by any means, but we absolutely do bring back snapshots of the desktop so that from a centralized location, it is easy to understand what's happening on my distributed set of resources. So I can easily gain a visual of what's happening. And in this case, you can see that it's running through automation, giving me some screenshots along the way. And the end result when complete, this one looks like it has an even cross-platform uh, built in where you've got some green screen happening there. But when this is complete, it would then send the result back to Jenkins so that the Jenkins um, documentation can reflect that activity. So that's wrapped up there. If I go back to Jenkins, we can see that it is complete. I'll click on this and look at the console output. Um, not to get too granular, but we latch onto the GUID so that we're communicating at, at all times about the exact event that was requested. And then ultimately we've returned back the status of failed. And all of those, those results, regardless of the resource that was used to provide that automation, are stored centrally and available now to the user. So this was just a quick glimpse, you know, foundationally of that interoperability that's being provided by our solution. So the outside world can even trigger the execution needs that we have on that continuous basis. Okay, so what is lights out testing? There are really many reasons for lights out testing in its original form, and it continues to be vital in the march towards on-demand continuous needs. Whether you're scheduling at night to maximize bandwidth, maximizing licensing of the application or applications involved, or whatever the reason being, it's often very effective to be able to schedule things to happen while we might be sleeping so that we can just receive our results when we arrive for our next day. Basically, we can test our entire set of business processes that way. And when we arrive in our morning, you, as you witnessed, the failure um, will be present. I may have 999 greens and one red, and that's the only one that I need to pay attention to because the greens all represent that we tested just like the user, doing all of the necessary validations along the way, and the red was where we encountered an exception. Then from an interop interoperability perspective, we've witnessed that we can kick this off on demand as event-triggered testing exercises for our agile or continuous needs. WorkSoft Execution Manager has the ability to make this very simple, helping to solve the aforementioned automation and distributed execution challenges. Regardless of the hook that you're using from the outside world, it's now just a call to the Execution Manager that has the ability to control resources, do the testing, and return those results. So when you hear or think about lights out testing for lights on business, you have a pretty clear picture of the continuous demand for quality testing that we're faced with. The ability to enable automation to provide this on a self-sufficient and repeatable way and an introduction to the WorkSoft solution designed from the beginning to accommodate for all of these challenges. I used the word insurance in the beginning and hopefully you can see that the WorkSoft solution represents just that insurance that we can introduce change without introducing issues. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of real world examples of how WorkSoft solution has provided the insurance that we're talking about. So for example, a federal government program with 10 million participants and 400 core processors, 500,000 steps are being tested nightly. 
Again, change is being introduced into this realm on a daily basis, and every night they're retesting, I'm sorry, they're testing over 500,000 steps of automation. What was historically manual testing, which clearly scales linearly and is not even achievable to this level, uh, unless you've got an army, which we've talked about and is not reasonable, automation is the key to being able to do this successfully. And a multi-billion dollar manufacturer of global luxury goods has scaled WorkSoft automation to running a total of 2,400 hours of testing per day using WorkSoft and Execution Manager. That's more than a man year of testing each day, and that speaks volumes to the achievable scale of automated testing. You can immediately start to calculate the massive parallel execution capability that is being applied. Bottom line, the solution, the concepts that we discussed today, are all providing for these examples. So I hope today's pres presentation has been helpful and informative, but at this point, I'll turn it back to Heather to see if we have any questions that we can take before signing off for today. Great job, Ty, thanks. And we do have a number of questions that have come in. Uh, for those out there, I'd like to remind you, if you have a question, please go ahead and submit it into the, the question console. Okay, so the first question I'll pose to you, uh, can you in simple language summarize what Execution Manager does that Jenkins does not do? Absolutely. So Jenkins is for managing your DevOps project assets. Execution Manager is providing the testing capability for testing those assets and those applications at any needed time. So they work together in unison to provide that overall um, DevOps capability. And the execution manager is truly the insurance part of making sure that we've vetted every change that we're checking into our Jenkins environment. Okay, great. Another question is regarding the demos. Which version of WorkSoft Analyze, Certify, Execution Manager were you using during the demos? Oh, that's a great question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from memory because I think I know without looking. Um, but I was using our, our SaaS uh, version of Analyze, which it in fact can be on-prem as well, but, um, but the SaaS version just maintains the latest and greatest version at all times. But from a Certify perspective, I specifically was using a 10.02 version for the demonstration today. Okay, great. We have a, a couple of uh, questions regarding test coverage, so I'm going to frame two of these up together. Um, can you automate the test that spans multiple applications? Can you use uh, WorkSoft for more than just SAP and SAP HANA? Great questions. So absolutely yes on spanning multiple applications. In fact, I want to go back to the expectation being that if you're using WorkSoft, and you've set up and configured it properly, the expectation is that you can start capture and capture web activity or capture SAP activity. So it is much more, answering that second part um, as a part of this, it is much more than just SAP. In fact, with web, that means any website. Now, it was important to mention that there often is some initial setup and configuration as needed for, for us to tell Certify how best to communicate with a particular, perhaps complex website, um, but it's absolutely attainable and capturable to facilitate the build of, of that automation. Now I'm gonna go just one extra step here and say that when we do these captures, especially in multiplayer experiences, it is often the fact that individuals will capture their part of an overall business process but it's very simple then to tie those together within our solution to drag them together whether it's in analyze and or within certify and then ultimately construct that end-to-end cross-platform example 